Hello and welcome to Sharing Your Great Practice. Now I'm in Surrey at Ash Manor School, which is a specialist technology college. They're also really enthused about STEM activities and devised a series of modules for year eight that's transforming children's attitude towards science and technology. <laughs> Tom Harris is Key Stage 3 Science Coordinator who, with his colleagues, has designed a series of engaging, hands-on STEM activities that help all of Year 8 take flight with their learning. He believes that STEM activities can infuse children in science and technology in a way that maybe some traditional methods simply can't. Very often we will compartmentalise and within science it is very easy to just say, right, this is a force, mm. this is how it applies in a certain situation. But what STEM allows us to do is to actually contextualise the science learning and link it in uh, with the bigger picture, things like technology, engineering and maths. And from that breadth, actually develop something that's more beneficial in terms of their learning and their experience as well. One of the activities okay. is built around it's designing a model it's glider it's that it's really it's takes to the air. It doesn't work. Okay. We're looking for you guys to have your designs glide. We've got to basically make an aeroplane that can go further. And what we're supposed to do is um, sort of base it on nature. And making it sure that there are, there's um, less weight, but there's um, more stability to make sure it actually travels in a straight line. Um, I think it will go a little way, but I don't think it will go overly far because this is only our prototype. Mathematics, technology, biology, design and physics are all touched on in this session. There's no preconceived ideas of what they're going to be doing. Um, at no point are we saying, this is where you're at, you will do this. We're saying, look, this is an activity, it's open-ended. Rather than thinking it's science, technology, engineering, maths, how can I shoehorn this into an activity? The activity itself goes, right, what, what science can I use? Because there's so much there to be actually sort of take from it. And so it, if the activity is right, STEM happens naturally. It's just all the different forces behind it. It's just really mind blowing and interesting. It's kind of like science in like real life, and it's like something that might actually like happen like in the real world. So it's not just loads of books and stuff. One of the most important things about the approach to STEM in this school is the teacher's understanding of the value of learning to cope and to move beyond failure. So if these children's designs don't actually fly, they're just back to the drawing board, thinking exactly what went wrong in their design so that they'll succeed next time. Nice! What good things are there from this? When you give them the confidence to get things wrong, when you say getting things wrong, they should be doing you suddenly create a, an environment where there isn't a negative vibe. They're not, they're not fearful of coming forward with their ideas or trying to improve themselves. They realise that, you know what, everyone's in this boat together. Even if, to be honest, this, the science, technology, engineering and maths, they forget all about fluid flow and dynamics and force and all of that. If they take away the fact that if they try and improve, they will get better, then STEM is a success no matter which way you look at it. One of the greatest challenges for this school, as with any other, is finding the time in the day to deliver the STEM activity. They identified tutor time as offering that opportunity. We could, for example, do this after school, um, but that's encroaching on all the a myriad of other activities we have after school. So if it's something they're doing in maths, it might be uh, a P after school activity. Um, if we want to make sure that all the students have a really worthwhile experience, to try and fit it into a form time was um, a bit of a no-brainer for us. Uh, there'll be a thousand reasons not to do this. A thousand reasons not to do it. And I think our little, or oh, my little mantra is, um, that's it, perhaps one of the reasons to do it. Because it is gonna be hard, it's gonna be challenging, uh, it's gonna um, challenge you with timetable issues, it's gonna challenge you with time, it's gonna challenge your creativity issues, it, and there will be a resource implication. But there are ways around it. And we are only, successful because we recognise that those are challenges that we as teachers need to overcome so that these students can access the very, very, very best. And it reaches out across different ability levels and across the genders, engaging all pupils in the relevance and excitement of STEM careers. It's 
taking away the barriers that we tend to erect around sort of different subject areas and saying, right, this is science and uh, you're a girl, so you'll do biology and you're a boy and you'll do physics. And that's a huge generalisation. And I know out there there are fantastic people doing biology, male and female, fantastic people doing uh, physics, male and female. But there is always the the stigma attached to certain situations. We will always challenge those gender stereotypes uh, and we will say we want female engineers to come in. We want to make sure that uh, everyone sees there's a potential route path for them that they might not necessarily have been able to see from before. So we sometimes positively discriminate on that basis. Well, if you want to boost STEM activities in your school, here are some tips from the teachers at Ash Manor. Finding the time is a challenge, but look carefully at your timetable and see if you can identify something, such as tutor time, where this can be slotted in. Find the activity that you think will engage the pupils and then work out the STEM subjects within it rather than the other way around. You don't have to buy activities that cost hundreds of pounds and are bought off the shelf. The most successful practice this school found was a low-tech solution that really delivered in terms of aspiration and enthusiasm. Look out for local and national competitions that involve entrepreneurial challenges around business, science and technology. To find out how you can take part in Sharing Your Great Practice, then visit the Teachers TV website and find the Sharing Your Great Practice page. Oh.